Mr. President, I rise today with a heaviness in my heart uh, for what we see happening in the last 36 hours in Hong Kong. Freedom-loving people in Hong Kong for the last 23 years have known basic, fundamental, human, and natural rights, and we see the Communist Party of China coming in and trying to steal their dignity and to steal their freedom. They live in real and tangible fear of what is going to happen tonight and this weekend and next week. Yesterday was July 1st. July 1st is the anniversary, 23 years ago, of Hong Kong's return to Chinese sovereignty under the Sino-British Joint Declaration. And under that agreement, the Communist Party of China made a pledge, not just to Hong Kongers and not just to the British, but to the watching world. And they said that it would guarantee, they would guarantee a certain level of autonomy and freedom to the Hong Kong community that Hong Kong would not be forced to live under the kind of despotism that the mainland Chinese are forced to experience. The Communist Party announced to the world in signing that declaration that Hong Kongers would be retaining a lot of freedom. Well, since that handover in 1997, and especially since 2003, when there was a another attempted national security law debated, the people of Hong Kong have been holding pro-democracy protests and celebrations every year uh, on, the, on the July 1st holiday. And annually on July 1st, uh, they have reminded the world of what the pledge was of the Communist Party in that agreement of July uh, 1997. Yesterday, though, protesting and demanding basic human rights and freedoms in Hong Kong became a crime. Under the new national security law, to speak out, to exercise your freedom of assembly, your freedom of speech, um, freedom of the press issues, is considered an act of secession, subversion, and terrorism. That's what the new national security law um, that the Chinese have forced on Hong Kong stipulates. Thousands of people, thousands of brave freedom lovers flooded into the streets anyway, and they celebrated yesterday, that anniversary, and they demanded that their representatives, who've sold them out to Beijing, would continue to testify to the pledges that were made 23 years ago yesterday. At the end of yesterday, several hundred of these freedom-loving protesters were arrested, and 10 of them were charged with suspected violations under the new national security law. Chinese government officials now seem to be saying that these folks, these 10, are going to be extradited to mainland China and face their charges there. Remember, the protests that we've seen in Hong Kong over the last 15 or 16 months were specifically because of an extradition law where Hong Kongers were facing the threat of being extradited to mainland China. And supposedly, according to the, the government officials in Hong Kong, um, this rule, this uh, intended legislation, was going to be suspended. Well, instead, it looks like it is, in effect, uh, connected to this new national security law. So yesterday really marks the beginning of a new reign of terror in Hong Kong. With the implementation of this national security law, it is abundantly clear that the Communist Party seeks to turn Hong Kong into a police state no different than Tibet or than Xinjiang. And the Hong Kong government no longer derives any power from the consent of the people it governed, but rather it seeks to rule solely by its cooperation with the CCP's security apparatus. Mr. President, we are witnessing the signs of the coming crackdown. And even before this law was signed, democracy activists and lawmakers, including Martin Lee, who's Hong Kong's father of democracy, and the drafter of Hong Kong's basic law, had already been rounded up. And many are expecting the same fate for themselves in the coming days. Many folks have begun to say goodbye to their families in anticipation that they're going to be rounded up and hauled off into another one of the Chinese um, re-education camps or whatever Orwellian euphemism we want to say uh, for the new and, and potentially coming Auschwitzes. I'm grieved reading over the last several days what are especially um, painful and tear-jerking farewell messages from many of these democracy activists in Hong Kong on social media heading up to midnight on June 30th before the new law took effect. My heart ached as I read Joshua Wong tweeting out uh, from the Psalms and in particular Psalm 23 verse 4 I may walk through the valleys as dark as death, but I won't be afraid. You are with me, and your shepherd's rod make me feel safe. This was mere hours after announcing that he and other Demonsisto members uh, of a democracy political organization would be closing down their organizations. 
pro-democratic parties and pro-independence parties like the Hong Kong National Front and Student Localism have announced on social media that they too have disbanded and will try to continue their fight for freedom from abroad. But if you read the national security law that the Communist Party is imposing, it looks like they are going to try to claim extraterritorial powers over Hong Kongers in exile regarding freedom of speech issues other places in the world as also a violation of this new tyrannical Communist Party Chinese law. Videos of restaurant owners and cafe owners uh, are up on social media and you can see them removing their pro-democracy po posters. Their signs celebrating the freedom that Hong Kong has known in the past. These folks are tearing down these signs in their own restaurants and in their places of assembly because they assume uh, that they are likely to be punished under the new national security law if they keep up signs that they've had in their places of business and uh, communing and breaking bread over the past many, many years. This serves as a chilling reminder of how the CCP rules through fear, which it turns ultimately into self-censorship. Hong Kong-based Twitter accounts have been deleted en masse. Individuals fear for their safety if they continue to use the platform, and they fear retribution for previous tweets supporting democracy and accountable government, which is just a fundamental human thing to be able to say or do or talk about or plead for. Like in mainland China, Twitter will undoubtedly become a tool that's reserved only for the oppressors, no longer for the oppressed. I fear that Joshua's request that, quote, if my voice will not be heard soon, I fear that the international, I hope that the international community will continue to speak up for the Hong Kongers and step up concrete efforts to defend our last bit of freedom, close quote. I fear that Joshua's request will be met with silence. I fear that we will fail Ronald Reagan's challenge to us, that we'd, we would be, quote, staunch in our conviction that freedom is not the sole prerogative of the lucky few, but rather it is the inalienable and universal right of all human beings, close quote. For we are all created in God's image and our rights come to us from God via nature, not because of the beneficence of some government. I fear that we in the United States and those in the international community will just simply move on from the kind of eminent crackdown in Hong Kong that we are gonna see that is gonna have echoes of what happened in Tiananmen Square in June of 1989, and that so many people just decide to allow the Chinese government to whitewash and pretend never happened. We must not allow that to happen. I pray that we in this body will live up to our convictions and that we will speak out about what the Communist Party is gonna to do to the freedom-loving people of Hong Kong. Thank you, Mr. President.